we have with us Preeti Desai, who is going to share with us her learnings on agility works only if you are truly agile. Without further ado, over to you, Preeti. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Shah, for uh, your warm welcome, and thanks to all who have actually, as Shah was saying, who joined us even before the session started. Thank you for taking time out to join the session. Uh, I'll start with a very brief introduction of myself. Uh, I'm Preeti, uh, Preeti Desai. I have an overall 23 years of experience uh, with a mixed baggage of experience across quality and delivery uh, over the years. Okay. I have performed uh, multiple roles. I have been a quality manager. I've been a scrum master. I've been a project manager over, you know, over a spread of uh, years. And what the topic that I will be covering today is agility works only if you are truly agile. And this is this is based on the learnings that I, uh, you know, on the practical problems and solutions that I implemented as a scrum master. Uh, when uh, for a project. Okay. Um, uh, feel free to post your questions. Even if you have questions during the session, feel free to post those questions. I'll definitely come to those questions uh, later. Um, I have kept a session, or I mean, I've kept a, a, set, uh, a place where we can do that. Uh, briefly, what we'll be covering is what is a mindset that is required. Okay. Uh, some important aspects in terms of uh, change management and stakeholder management, which are very, very uh, important and imperative uh, to be thought about and actually worked on uh, through the entire life cycle of a project. Uh, then I'll move on to where uh, the project context where we started from, okay, where, are the, where I started from, uh, what did we do, okay, and then how did that help and in you know, where we came to finally. So where did we start? What did we do? And where did we come to? So that's my like brief agenda. Um, so starting with mindset, what kind of mindset is really required, right? Uh, there are two kinds of mindset. There is a growth mindset and there is a fixed mindset, okay? As they say over here, it's simple enough. I mean, what is growth mindset is everything that you read on the slide over here, right? Uh, but why is it important to have this growth mindset is basically what I, so which is why I just cover each of those points. Uh, persevere in the face of failures. Uh, I think personally, my belief is that COVID maybe may have been, you know, World War III, where, uh, well, it was not a war with arms, but it was definitely, you know, a war against uh, uh, an illness, right? And the entire world was affected. Uh, we probably are still affected to some extent but otherwise we have learned that we have to you know in the face in the face of some challenge in the face of you know uh, things not working out we still have to keep trying to do the best of what we can do okay so that is perseverance which is really really important uh we need effort to build a few skills right uh we are where what we are till now because of what we have learned from the times that we have grown across, we have come into this earth till the time that we are here today, right? Every day I believe, personally I believe every day we can learn something new or some small thing, it need not be some great thing. But every day is a chance for us to learn something new, okay? So, but that requires time, effort and patience. So we should be, and we should be invested in ourselves so that we put in that effort to build new skills, okay? Uh, inspiration in somebody's success. Don't be, uh, you know, there is no reason to be uh, not so happy with somebody's success. You don't need to have contention because somebody else is succeeding. We should look upon that as an opportunity which will help us to, you know, take inspiration and see how we can do better in, in whatever we are doing. Embrace challenges again. Uh, things are not always going to work out the way that we want them to work. Right? We, I would rather that you know every day I, you know, whatever I do works works out great, fantastic. But unfortunately, that's not life, right? So we are going to have issues. We need to figure out what we can, you know, how we can overcome those issues. So 
we need to embrace those challenges and then overcome them, right? Uh, except criticism. Now, this is a this is the point which probably is not so you know it's not something which we really like, right? Uh, you know, somebody criticizing about me or somebody telling you know you're not good enough or something. Uh, we, I mean, sometimes we might just kind of say you know you know I do not agree with this. Uh, but rather than uh, rather than ignoring, okay, because maybe somebody is not trolling, somebody is actually giving a correct suggestion. So it is something which will definitely help you to understand, you know, to get better, right? Something which something is not right, let us learn from that and get better at what we do, right? So we accept criticism, okay? Always have a desire to learn. Every day, uh, I should be wanting to have some learning out of my day, right? Build abilities is again the same thing. You know, we need to keep building whatever we know uh, as compared to yesterday versus today, right? Uh, whereas this kind of mindset, which is limiting, right? Where we would avoid challenges, where we, you know, if if we are if we can't into some issues, you know, we just you know, leave it. Let me not do it. Uh, wanting to, uh, you know, wanting to ignore feedback. Okay, threatened by somebody else's success. This is this kind of attitude is not really going to help us to, you know, get better on a daily basis. So first and foremost is the right mindset. Okay, and this is something we really need to think about and actually work on. Um, then the other uh, the elephant in the room, right? Uh, change management, right? If you if you any time you ask somebody that you know this is a change that we want to implement or uh, this is something that we want to try, okay? Uh, people are always going to ask the question, why? Why do I even need a change? Do I really need a change? Things are working fine, right? Why are you asking me to do something which? And things are working perfectly fine, right? So that is something that people are going to not want. Okay, we have to understand that nobody likes change, but change is always going to happen. Change is constant, right? So change is constant, but what we need to uh, so instead of saying no to change, instead of or rather embracing change, at least hear out what is the reasoning, what is the logic, okay? behind why a change is required, okay? And based on that, you can decide on whether you really want, you know, you agree to a particular assessment or not, right? So change management is something which takes time, effort, and perseverance, and it takes a lot of time, okay? Six months, depending upon the kind of change you're actually looking for, it could be anywhere between six months to uh, three years. So that is something that we need to be cognizant about. Uh, okay, stakeholder mapping. Why is this important, really? Is it important? Yes, because we always need to understand who are the stakeholders that we are interacting with, and the stakeholders, uh, the chain, the you know, stakeholders. Uh, uh, the it, it, it depends on two factors: the influence and the power that the stakeholders have, okay, and the interest of the stakeholders. So I'll start with a simple example. The customer that we interact with on a daily basis, right, uh, those, are the, these are, those are the ones who have a high level of influence and power, okay, and are and have a high level of interest in them, right? They want to know what is really happening in the project. They want to know if things are working fine. They want to know if something is going wrong, right? So we need to manage them closely. How do we manage them closely? Keep them in, uh, in, in you know, uh, give them updates on what is happening. Um, uh, help them understand whenever they have any questions on what is really happening, why it is happening. Communicate and tell them everything, right? Um, next, we come to the set of people who are high influence and power, okay? But they may not really have a lot of, uh, you know, interest in the daily ongoing sort of project. Who, who could be your customer's boss, or customer's boss's boss, you know, 
So it could be anybody. But that is that, that may, we need to understand that hierarchy and then keep them satisfied. So whenever they need information, we need to be ensuring that we provide that information immediately, right? Uh, the third is uh, this. They have a very high interest, but they do not really have much of influence and power. Uh, probably the quality folks are far out of, of organization. If you notice, they are really, really, they want to understand, right, what is happening in the project. Are the projects working fine? Is there a problem? Uh, right? Uh, so, but they don't really, they cannot really have much of influence. So we keep them informed. We inform them of whatever is happening. Okay. This last quadrant of people is what we need to keep looking out for is people with low influence and power and low interest. What we need to do is monitor them to see if ever they get into any of these other three quadrants. Right? So this is so uh, once we have identified what which who comes and what we know what to do, which is the reason we need to understand this particular mapping. Uh, I'll move on to the case study in the project. Um, this is where I started from. Okay, I joined the project as a Scrum Master in Sprint 15. Okay, this is a retro board of uh, Scrum Master uh, of uh, Sprint 15, where uh, it, it was blank. Okay. Uh, now, is it really possible that a team of 25 people don't really want to talk anything? Uh, so, people, so there was this, first of all, there is always this hesitation when somebody new joins, right? So, what is this person going to bring in? Is that person going to bring in that change? Is it going to help us more importantly, right? So, that is something that people are really, uh, which is why you see, you might see a hesitation in the uh, in in the late in the uh, initial stages, but as you as the other retro goes right, we are. I mean, it's not like there are no issues. There are issues in that this project was being executed during phase two of COVID, right? So if you see, people were stressed. Okay, people were like, you know, we are putting too much pressure on ourselves. So so the, the people were stressed. Um, even I made mistakes. Okay, so retro points, I, I didn't, uh, I mean, I didn't really action them in, uh, uh, in some cases. Okay, and so and even that was, till that point in time, all I had was theoretical knowledge on Scrum, right? That was the first time that I was actually performing the role of Scrum Master. So even I made mistakes, even I learned, learned from those mistakes. Uh, so then, now, what we actually did for our people okay and before i get into what we actually did uh one thing we always need to remember is the values of scrum right respect commitment focus courage and openness that is something we always will need to have at the bottom of our you know at the back of your head say that this is something that this is how i we always want to be or behave okay be respectful of everybody around us okay be committed to meeting our project goals. Be focused on the work that we need to do, right? Uh, be courageous enough to open up and raise issues when there are issues rather than keeping quiet about it. It doesn't help um, if, the, if we really want to bring in a change. Somebody has to tell what is the change that is required, right? So it needs courage to open up and talk about things. Feel free to do that, okay? Be open. Openness is like be open about uh, talk about the good things. Talk about the bad. Let us have a trust, a trusty, a trustful, and a transparent communication always, right? Because only transparent communications really help the projects, right? Help the team morale, build the team morale. So uh, that is something that we always need to remember. These Scrum values are something that we need to abide. The Scrum, the Agile values are something that we always need to abide by. Okay, now moving on to what was done. So for the customer, what we started with uh, was we tried to understand what were the problems that they were facing. Okay, uh, based on the problems, what was a, from our side, what is it that was going wrong and what is going right? Okay, do a, a root cause analysis. Okay, and identify what are the solutions and implement them. Again, it is important that we 
identify the solutions and also implement them completely, right? Not halfway or not midway, right? No, sorry, not midway or some part of it. A complete implementation of solutions is what helps. Uh, Cadence-based meetings. Now, this is where, you know, un we understand who are the stakeholders, right? So if it is our uh, daily, I mean, if it's a customer who's very, very, uh, uh, who really needs to understand what is happening on the project on a daily, daily basis, uh, either we have daily, we have bi-weekly, okay, or tri-weekly. So however it is that we can keep them informed of what is happening, we uh, keep them appraised so that they also know that, you know, things are going right or things are going wrong, okay, and accordingly we can, if we get derailed somewhere, we can kind of come back, uh, you know, or come back on track before we go completely off track. Okay. Uh, so, uh, cadence based meetings is something very, very important. And the cadence also helps, uh, you know, our human mind or it trains our human mind to say that, oh, I have to go and meet. I know today now I have to go and meet this person at this time. So, that cadence really helps. Okay. Um, now, when, uh, when, uh, so what happened in our case was uh, um, initially there was a VP who was really looking into the project, but then he really couldn't put so much time understanding uh, the daily uh, issues, right? So he brought in another person who would actually be working with us to understand what is happening on a, on a daily basis. So um, initially when she came and she was a little hesitant, okay, and I could feel that hesitation that when we used to say some things, she was like, are you painting a rosy picture or are things really good? Uh, so then I had a very uh, open conversation with her and I asked her exactly why, what is your, you know, what is your hesitation? What is the one thing that is stopping you from, uh, you know? Because I said, I sense a hesitation. I would like to understand. I have to remove that. Okay. And uh, then she actually, which is where she mentioned that she had uh, actually uh, an experience with an earlier uh, Indian based uh, organization. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't tell things as they were. And then things really kind of crashed in the end. So she was coming with that experience. And, you know, she was not too sure on whether she really, you know, this is another Indian company again. Can I really trust them? So, but what happened is with that meeting or with that long discussion, it helped her also understand that we don't work that way. Apart from that, over the months, you know, whatever interactions we had, uh, she was very, very clear that, you know, we'll tell what it is without, uh, you know, without painting a rosy picture. What it is, it is because we always believe in giving a trust, a transparent communication, right? It helps them, it helps us. Um, trolls, okay? Now, again, which is where I'm, say, where I'm saying the previous thing, there's a difference between criticism and trolls. We need to identify if, if they are trolls, okay, we should not be feeding the trolls. That is something that we don't really want. Let's not feed customer tools, but uh, when, uh, because there are different stakeholders, right? The customer side, you might have a different set of people who are uh, associated with the project. And anybody can choose to troll, but if it's a customer who's trolling, uh, we can't just, you know, and because obviously the stakeholders will be, you know, a part of all these, or at least they will be aware of all the tools. So we, we can't just say, okay, no, we, let, let us just ignore it. All that we need to do is we should not be feeding the tools, but we need to ensure that uh, the relevant stakeholders are informed about the facts. Okay? Uh, openly tell them what is the correct thing or whatever is the wrong thing, but be very, very open about uh, whatever is our side of the story. Right? So that is something, and it should be fact-based. It should not be uh, you know, it should not, it should be basically, it should be fact based. Uh, then, for our internal leadership, we used to have cadence based meetings. Okay. Again, I keep repeating this cadence because cadence is something really, really important. Uh, where uh, we would tell them, you know, what things are 
how are things happening uh, they would give us a lot of uh, good feedback and you know you should be trying this you should be trying this uh, because so even see they also have their own experience and they will have their own level of knowledge which we can use for our purpose it makes it easier for us also to you know talk about what are the challenges that we have so that if there's some way they can help us you know we talk about it during the meetings so um, yes cadence based meetings um, now for the team very very important right it is the team which is going to work on what needs to be done and it's a team who is going to uh, give or uh, meet help meet the project outcomes right uh so they initially what we realized is for whatever reason people were not really able to meet the delivery commitments okay and what we basically did is we you know we took a hard look at that fact and we said you know it does this is not done right if we have made a commitment then this is something we need to understand and meet i mean we cannot just not meet those commitments so then what we okay so uh once we uh once we took a hard look we identified things that were going wrong and so out okay it's not just uh, once twice it's a ongoing activity that we need to figure out if things are not going right what can be done okay find the solution and implement those solutions okay and that really helped that really helped. uh people were uh, then because once we are uh, the along with that the other what uh, i also read is i categorize uh, people based on uh, the role that they were performing so we had developers we had testers uh, we had architects we had a uh, product owner right so based on discussions with each of them okay uh, i was able to gauge on what is their thought around the whole thing okay and if it was something which really need to be worked on we did come up and implement uh, corrective and preventive actions which helped because overall the team morale kept improving through the entire you know life of the project the other thing is uh, in terms of compensate loss what used to happen is typically there was as as you will all know that you know, there's a point when there's too much of work and there's this some kind of slack period so some sometimes people used to like to work on saturdays on sundays okay so then what we would say okay fine you know you really work on saturday sunday just taken off okay monday tuesday taken off it's okay no need to put in leaves or something just taken off because you have put in your effort right you have given your you have put in your commitment so how do we reward that commitment i'm sorry um retros while we definitely love transparent communication sometimes people might be a little reluctant in opening up and talking about the problems okay so um transparent communications are always good right but retros try and make them anonymous okay sometimes i might want to say something which might hurt somebody and hence i don't say it or i say it and then there is a tiff in the team so instead of getting into those issues best is make it anonymous okay uh, whoever wants to put in whatever point feel free to put in those points so that the more we know what is going wrong the more we can correct uh, hi um, preeti yeah just a gentle uh, time check preeti yeah what is the time sorry i'll help it's 7:55 pm right now oh okay okay so i'll quickly uh, it should be Okay, so um, okay, sorry. So um, okay, I'll quickly cover the other points. Okay, then we had we added the uh, buffers in the team so that people could, you know, wherever there was too much of work, people could uh, kind of uh, others would be there to help us. Uh, we had more than enough formal meetings, right? Informal meetings, meeting once in a while uh, with the new hybrid way of working or working from home. We have lost that, you know, that. that talk that we should do over uh, in canteen over coffee right so uh, those meetings are equally but once once a month one hour is more than enough right rockstars this is what i started for every sprint somebody who has done something more above and beyond what is a regular expected work 
okay they were awarded and uh, they were awarded rather they, this rock stars of the sprint used to go to the team and the senior management and which became a motivational factor for the people in the project okay uh, videos right we have more than enough videos available uh, use the technology right uh, face to face communication is important there's a reason okay lastly and not leastly uh, race matrix brings in the accountability and this is where we came to over 6 months i even after saying that you know people please put in your points there were absolutely no points okay this had actually now become an agile uh, uh, agile uh, maturity right a mature agile team um yeah so that's all i wanted to cover a uh, question sorry i think i just overshot my time too much sorry about that any questions uh none on the chat window or the q and a so far preeti so thank you again everyone once again thank you preeti thank you all thanks you all